these are some exercises to prepare yourself for your total hip or total knee replacement surgery. The first exercise is the armchair push-up. The way that it's written in your book is to actually do a push-up, hold it for a few seconds, and then relax. If that's too challenging for you, another way to do it is by just doing the push-up without the hold. And if that's too challenging, as long as you're trying to straighten your elbows, you're actually using the right muscles. The reason that you're doing this exercise is to prepare your arms and your shoulders so that they won't be overused when you're using your walker or crutches after your surgery. The second exercise is the long arc quad or quadriceps muscle. and That's the muscle on the front of your thigh. The way that it's written in your book is to actually kick your leg out, hold it for a few seconds, and let it down slowly. If that's too challenging, you can just kick your leg and, let, and not do the hold. If that's too challenging, as long as you're trying to straighten your knee, you're using the correct muscles. The third exercise is the heel slide. This should be performed lying down. It's usually most comfortable to do it in bed. It's easier to get on and off of a bed rather than on and off the floor. It's simply a range of motion exercise. While you're lying there, you're just going to bend your hip or knee. You may have a lot of range of motion, or you only have a little bit of range of motion. Just do it in the range of motion that you have available. Exercise number four are the gluteal squeezes. And yes, those are your behind muscles. The way that it's written in the book is to actually squeeze the butt cheeks together, hold for a few seconds if you can, and then gently let go. Sometimes that's a challenging exercise to do, so you can also do it with your knees bent, squeeze the butt cheeks, and try to actually lift if you can, hold for a few seconds, and let yourself down gently. The fifth exercise is the quad set. The quad or quadricep muscles are those muscles on the front of your thigh. The way the exercise is written, you're simply tightening that muscle and making a leg that's straight even straighter. Sometimes it can be challenging to learn how to do this exercise, so there are a few tricks that make it a little bit easier. One of the best tricks is to have someone put their hand behind the back of your knee. Try to bring the back of your knee towards that hand. That trick often works the best. Another trick that works is to bring your foot back. Sometimes that'll get you to tighten the muscle. And some people even have to do both legs at the same time, or both legs and both feet at the same time. You just need to figure out what trick works the best for you. The, the sixth exercise is hip abduction. This is another range of motion exercise performed while you're lying down. While you're lying there, you're simply going to take your leg to the side and then bring it back to midline. You may have a lot of range of motion or you may only have a little bit of range of motion. Just do it in the range of motion that you have available. The final exercise is the ankle pumps. You might think this is a pretty simple and basic exercise, but this is an exercise that promotes blood flow. After surgery, you're going to be sitting and lying down a little bit more than you probably normally would, and the blood is going to tend to pool in your feet. That increases your risk of blood clots. So by doing these ankle pumps, it keeps the blood flowing, just like if you were walking around, and decreases your risk of blood clots. You should begin these exercises as soon as possible to prepare yourself for the surgery. They should be performed two to three times a day daily, and I would suggest doing them on both legs. Maybe you're only having the surgery on your right leg, but your left leg's gonna be doing a little bit of extra work after the surgery, so it's good to prepare that leg too. Another thing to remember is to breathe while you're doing the exercise. It's human nature to hold our breath if something is challenging, but that can make your blood pressure and your heart rate go up and down, which is not a good thing. So count your repetitions out loud that means that you have air in your lungs.